Welcome everyone back to Weekly Weather Updates. And this evening we'll be having a look at the latest on the very severe storms we've seen over the course of this afternoon. And are still rumbling away in a few regions this evening. And we'll also have a look at the longer term outlook. As this is looking pretty unsettled for the end of July and early August. But do remember if you enjoyed my videos make sure you do like and subscribe. And do remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link is in the description. Now I said in yesterday's video... We were going to see, we were potentially going to see some very intense thunderstorms, and I can say it has come off. There have been uh, no busts today. We did have some very severe thunderstorms earlier. Now, there are only a few cells really remaining um, as it's now veering into the evening. So things are dying down a little bit, but you can see where that convergence zone did set up. Um, we've still got a lot of heavy rain there, building up the quite severe rainfall totals. The heaviest rain we saw was in East London, or East to Northeast London, um, where we've seen about two, three inches of rain in some regions as we had some stationary thunderstorms developing over the top there. But there's still a lot of heavy rain around, so do keep an eye out um, for any flooding the road, because if we do wind it back only to about five o'clock, you can still see all those active thunderstorms that there were, bringing severe conditions um, to many locations, especially in that London area. But they've now sort of started to ramp down and we're just seeing a lot of quite steady to heavy um, rain around um, at the moment. So if we do have a look at the rainfall totals, which just gives you an ind indicator of where we did see the heaviest rain, just shows you how quickly things can go from very poor conditions to decent conditions. You can see where we've had that line of thunderstorms all the way from East Anglia, all the way just south of Norwich, all the way through London, down into sort of Sussex area. Um, Surrey down into Kent as well. Um, you can see where we've got these yellow um, orange blobs which has been where we've seen it, these severe thunderstorms sort of stay stationary and here north east London we saw some very severe conditions with a lot of widespread flooding um, once again in, the, in these regions and again two three inches potentially within that um, has actually been recorded by rain gauges not radar estimates but you can see the radar estimates here and just shows you how severe the rain is. You go 20, 30 miles east, very little rain. You go 20, 30 miles uh, west, um, and again, very little rain. So it just shows you how localised these storms are, and the regions um, here have had some very severe rainfall totals. If we now have a look at the latest lightning strikes, you can see there are very few active storms remaining. Um, there's still... A reasonably active storm out near Chelmsford, you can see hasn't had a lightning strike in a few minutes, but there's another active storm down in Kent um, with a lightning strike very recently. And still still some could pop up every now and again um, over the course of this evening, over the next hour or two, but it's looking a lot more like a rainfall event now as, those, as that lightning will die away. If we go back all the way till half three this evening, um, or this afternoon, you can see the amount of active storms where all these orange strike storms uh, Strikes are active storms, and you can see where that heavy, heavy rain was over northeast London. And um, you can see the active thunderstorms there. If we run it on to about half four, you can see those active storms moving very slowly westwards. And you can see this front along this convergence zone of very, very active storms um, and a lot of lightning strikes and a lot of rain in a short period of time. And then as we head towards around 540, you can see those active storms start to diminish, and they did sort of back build up into East Anglia and Essex, but those have now started to die away. And you can see at the moment, very few active storms left. If we do now have uh, a, a look at the weather warnings. Now, as I'm recording this, um, this amber warning is about to expire at 7pm, but we did have the snap amber warning force um, put in. I did say in yesterday's video there was a decent chance we were going to see that. And in fact, the Met Office probably did actually put it a bit too far west. Um, the worst conditions were a tad further east and south of this location, um, down um, in sort of Ilford, Rom uh, Romford, down into Walthamstow. It did get parts of Enfield as well, which is um, de uh, decent from the Met Office. But I th when they issued the storm, the thunderstorms were progressing that way. And what happened was they sort of started to backbuild. A little bit and that's where we saw the heaviest rain even though in the amber warning we still have seen a lot of rain still a lot of lightning strikes because i am in the amber warning right now um uh, the heaviest stuff was probably a bit further east but just shows you how difficult it is forecasting these storms even looking at the live radar the met office got it slightly wrong but the message was out there um most of london was in pretty much 
pretty da uh, pretty big danger from these storms, and we have seen some significant flooding. Elsewhere, the yellow thunderstorm warning has been um, in force all day, really. Many areas towards the western extent of it um, haven't really seen too much, um, but many in the eastern, southeastern portion have seen plenty of heavy rain and storms. And again, each shower could bring 20 to 40 millimetres in that amber zone, potentially 75 to 100 millimetres. And some areas have seen that 50 to 75 millimetres, and it's still raining at this point. Not quite as heavy, but it's still raining, and I suspect we could be seeing some rain gauges when we wake up tomorrow morning. Um, some people could report be reporting up to 100 millimeters of rain in some locations but it is looking like the next few days or at least the next week is not looking particularly active for any storms or heat um, as you can see there are no warnings in force and i know for some people that will be a relief that the weather is sort of dying down from the extremes we've had over the last week if we now have a look at the gfs we'll have a look at the mid to long range outlook, the, we have a look at the GFS ensembles, and then we'll briefly have a look at the UK Met Office run, um, just looking at what we could be seeing over the next few days. So if we run through, you can see that low pressure system that's brought the severe thunderstorms is spreading out into the North Sea, and will slowly edge away. We still are under, under low pressure influence, but we're not under really a centre of a low, so there's not going to be too much activity, but there still will be some showers around. But tomorrow we could see some warm temperatures and we still do have a brief little bit of warm air across the country. But that is going to be swept away by Tuesday. So we could see 25, 26 degrees in a few locations. But that low pressure is going to come back from Iceland, sink down southwards. And we're just going to be spiring in a lot of showers and uh, persistent areas of rain as well. Um, so some areas could see quite a bit of a deluge there as well. As we continue to the end of the week, we can just see northerly winds prevail. Pretty cold temperatures actually coming down all the way from the North Pole or sort of the Svalbard region. Um, you can see at this time of the year there isn't that much cold air, to be honest, in the North Pole. But we are bringing down cooler conditions. And in the winter, this would be driving in a lot of snow and some freezing cold temperatures. But we are middle of summer, so it's just going to be a little bit chilly on that northerly wind. But nothing too substantial. Temperatures probably a tad below average. And still a lot of showers around uh, as we're under low pressure. As we head to day 10, low pressure continues to spiral in off the Atlantic. So more rain and more cloud. Beyond that, we do see a brief ridge of high pressure. And then we sort of go into a sort of a zonal sine wave pattern where we get low pressure, high pressure, um, and then more low pressure again. Between these lows, there will always be a brief little ridge of high pressure where we could see some dry conditions um, very briefly, maybe 12 hours or so. But... It's looking pretty, pretty miserable out there for any summer lovers who love the 25 plus degree temperatures we've had widely over the last 10 days, really. Um, it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing a lot of that um, for the end of July and early August. But there still is a lot of potential. We can still see 30 degrees all the way into September. So for all those heat lovers out there, um, it is still there's still a decent chance we do still see some very hot conditions um, left this summer. For those out there who enjoy thunderstorms, it's not a classic thunderstorm setup with these lows coming in off the Atlantic. But as ever in summer, when we do have a lot of low pressure around, we do have quite warm air to our south and southeast. We can see thunderstorms similar to today, where we didn't have um, insane um, upper air temperatures, but we get that big instability, that strong cape off the off Europe. We could see some more thunderstorms over the next few weeks. So just need to keep an eye on that for those thunderstorm lovers. So if we do have a look at the GFS ensembles at temperature at 850 HPA and precipitation, you can see apart from the next two days, temperatures are going to be widely pretty well below average, um, or pretty significantly below average, between 2 to 4 degrees below average, with the average being around 8 or 9 degrees, um, maybe even touching on 10 degrees at points. And we're going to be seeing temperatures around 6, maybe dipping a little bit below that at points. You can see a lot of precipitation spikes, no massive um, consistent deluges at the moment, but a lot of persistent um, rainfall spikes most days. So it just means we always have that low pressure spiraling in showers. So it's not looking particularly good for dry conditions. If we have a look at the two meter temperatures, you see generally this is London, so it's probably going to be a bit tad warmer than some areas out in the countryside and further northwards. You can see over the next couple of days, we can still get into the mid-20s, but beyond that, as the 850 HPA temperatures fall, more cloud comes in and more rain. It does look like temperatures are going to be hovering around 20 degrees, maybe a tad above where we see some sunshine, and below that when we have rain and clouds, so feeling colder than average 
for the foreseeable future, so not particularly pleasant conditions coming. If we finally have a look at the UK Metals Fund, we'll just run through the next couple of days just to see what um, uh, we could be looking at over the next sort of few days. Now, we've got these thunderstorms that are dissipating away this evening, and they eventually um, will sort of fade away. Now, there's still probably going to be a lot of heavy rain around, um, probably it's around maybe 10, 11 p.m. tonight, but they are fading. I don't expect too much more thunder, uh, thundery activity. Um, in um, a, what, after probably around 8 p.m. tonight, that's probably when they cut off and the sun starts to set for any more thundery activity. But you never know, there could still be an odd isolated storm out there, but most activity will drop off. Tomorrow, looking things look reasonably dry in the morning before maybe a few showers pop up in the afternoon for many areas. Rain is spreading enough the Atlantic for Ireland and Northern Ireland as weather fronts return. And so through Monday, that weather fronts progress, potentially bringing some quite heavy rain for eastern areas through Tuesday morning. Well, central, southern and eastern areas through Tuesday morning. And then by Tuesday afternoon, widespread, pretty heavy showers around again. Could be some thunderstorms within that, but it doesn't look like there's a massive thunderstorm signal at this stage. We'll just really have to keep an eye on that over the next few days. And then beyond that, just more rain spiralling in. You can see the widespread nature of these showers. A lot of hit, hit and miss showers. Um, will be a lot of sunshine probably within these sh uh, within the breaks between the showers, but it will still mean getting anything outdoors um, done successfully in dry conditions is going to be pretty difficult, as it does look like most areas are going to be seeing these showers. And as we head towards 120 hours, you see more rain is coming from the north. So it does look like we're going to be seeing a lot of rain over the next few weeks. Some areas could get an absolute deluge. Um, other areas maybe could get less rain. Uh, but still doesn't look like any area is going to remain particularly dry. If we look at the two meter temperatures, if we run to um, or one and a half meter temperatures, if you run, if we run to when uh, Monday afternoon, you can see temperatures maybe 25, 26 degrees. So maybe tomorrow might be the last sort of hot day um, for a while. Um, again, that will be in sunshine. We do see that some of those showers pop up, especially further west. Temperatures could be a little bit cooler. But by Tuesday, as we have more widespread showers and persistent rain, temperatures really struggling in many areas, high teens, maybe just 20 or 21, and then maybe 23 degrees in the far east. And then Wednesday, widely all areas, a lot cooler than this week, potentially. Well, most areas are looking like about, uh, they're going to be about 10 degrees cooler than they were that uh, last Wednesday, where we saw 30 degrees quite widely um, across England. And even Northern Ireland as well, temperatures are only around 17, 18 degrees. Scotland, maybe even 10, 11 degrees, so feeling very chilly there. And maybe the high, maybe 22 degrees in central southern England. As we head through Thursday, again, temperatures really struggling uh, at around 18, 19 degrees widely. And then a few locations a bit cooler and a couple of locations maybe getting above 20 degrees, especially further east and southeast, where we still have warmer air from the continent that could get dragged up at the lower levels. Um... And with those westerly winds, always western air is going to be favoured for shower and the cooler uh, cooler conditions. So really isn't looking too good at the moment. So if you are, um, if you do love the hot weather, probably tomorrow, uh, Monday, is probably going to be uh, the last day of anything significantly warm for the foreseeable future, really. Again, heat waves and hot spells can pop up on the ensembles and on the operational runs very quickly. Um... But I'd say at the moment, the next seven days, there is really no chance of anything particularly warm or dry. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you are out in the southeast at the moment, do make sure you stay safe there. I've heard numerous reports of some flooding and surface water, uh, standing surface water in several areas. So do keep an eye out for that and don't drive through any floodwaters. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.